Hi students, this is going to be a quick introduction on how to get started on your STEM module project on optical illusions. So it seems that some people are struggling with how to get started and uh, don't want to waste any more time. Let's get straight into it. So I think as teachers, we started with some assumptions. We assume that you've done this stuff. So like your step one is read the book, look up words you don't know, um, prepare things as you go along, complete all the class activities, catch up with any activities you're missing, ask questions when you get confused, do some searches, for example, Google, and think of your own ideas. But based on looking at the books and answering some of the questions, there are some of you who are still struggling. So here's a guide on that. If you're not sure how to get a level two, then this video is for you. This is how to get started. So step number one is open your book and get to the relevant page. You can find the page on PowerPoint. It's in the bottom right, um, slightly offset. So if it says 143 here, it will be 145 in your book. I don't know why these are a bit different, but just have a look here. You will see it. And you're looking for the orange page, which is their module project. So open your book to the relevant page. And once you have the relevant page, you will need to look up any words you don't know. So I think there are still some students who don't know what optical illusion means. So what do you do? You go to Google and you look up optical illusion. You can use this search here, which is if you write define, D-I-F-I-N-E, colon, and then you put the word that you want to look up it will take you straight to a dictionary definition and you don't need to actually click on the dictionary. So here are a couple of searches I did. Optical illusion. Um, it is something that deceives the eye by appearing to be other than it is and an experience of seeming to see something which does not exist or is other than it appears. If you still don't understand this, there is a box over here that allows you to translate to your native language. So um, if you look up dictionary definition, you still don't get it. There's always translation options. Or you can search for these. So what does deceive mean? You can click on the hyperlink. It will take you to deceive. Um, so here we also have um, some words like image. Um, so yeah, we have image here. So here's a definition for image. If you don't know what an image is, then it's down here. Then if image doesn't work, you can Google optical image and optical image is going to take you to a definition which might be more useful. So this is the apparent reproduction of an object formed by a lens or mirror system for reflected, refracted or diffracted waves. So these are three of the interactions we studied. We had reflection, refraction and diffraction. If you don't know what those mean, Google them. And after you've looked up your words, you are going to write down your keywords. So I've made a short list here. These are some keywords which we've been through in class already. If you haven't written them down and you haven't got them in your class, they're not on the whiteboard, then you can use this as your example and feel free to just put these into your dictionary or Google or ChatGPT, whatever you're going to use, and translate them into your own language or find the English definition or preferably both. Okay, once you have written down keywords, you'll need to complete the tasks in your book. So this is just a bigger version of that page here. All I've done is taken this box and I've made it bigger. And we need to fill in some examples. So in class, we had beakers and we put water in them, we looked through and what did we notice? So you should have written this down as you went along, but if you didn't, um, let me just insert text. Yeah. Okay. I'll do it here and then I'll move it down. So Beaker will transmit light through and it will also refract. Mm 
doesn't want to move. Um, there we go. So transmission and refraction. Transmission means to allow the light to be let through, and refraction means change of direction due to change of wave speed. So fill this in for all of the objects that we've done in class. There might be some that we haven't done in class, like vegetable oil. You can try that out by yourself. So you should already have written these down as we went along. This is from lesson one. But if you haven't done it, you've got two options. First option is you can pick up the equipment from the room and you can try it yourself. See where the light is transmitted through, whether it's absorbed, refracted, whatever, and then just write down the relevant word in the relevant box. So most of the words are on the key list here. Transmit, absorb, emit, scatter, reflect, refract. These are going to be the major ones. So just match them. The correct word in the box. If there are any you're not sure on, the first thing to do is ask a friend. And if the friend doesn't know, you can ask me. Once that's done, you're going to go to your graphic organizer. And if you don't know what graphic organizer is, don't worry too much about it. All you need to do is draw some diagrams and write some words in the box. So for, it says here, planning after lesson two, make a graphic organizer with reflection in the center. So hopefully you know the reflection is when a wave bounces off a surface, it changes direction. So we need an example of reflection. Maybe you're going to use a plane mirror. Or maybe you're going to use a concave mirror or convex mirror. If you don't know what those words means, again, look them up, add them to your list. Then um, you draw your mirror, whichever mirror you like. You're going to draw that in the middle of the page. And you're going to draw other equipment that could be used with the mirror and show how a mirror image can be formed using your mirror. Once you've done that, you're going to do the same thing for refraction. So we did refraction using the beaker. We looked through the beaker and we saw the ruler was bent and the dice was a different size. So that's one example, but you don't have to use a ruler or a dice. You can use anything you like. And you don't have to use a beaker. You can use lenses. You can use any object which does refraction. So put your idea here, draw it out. And then the planning after lesson four means combine your ideas of reflection and refraction together. And you can also add filtration, which means a filter is going to absorb certain colors and let other colors through. You can combine them together and you're going to draw it on this page here, which would be 147 in your books. So just follow it through. Once you've done all that, you are ready to go, you are ready to make it. So, your step five is try it out. Once you have decided the equipment you're going to use, it might work well, it might not work so well, you try it out and you're going to check whether it does what you want it to do. That's step six. How do you know if it's okay? We look at the requirements of the task, which are up in Teams. I uh, shared them with you in the general channel, and we highlighted them in class. So you need to make sure that you have at least two different interactions with light. So that could be um, reflection and refraction, or it could be reflection and absorption. You can choose any two you like, and you can use more than two if you want more than two. And the image that you create can be virtual or it can be real. If it's um, a virtual image, you'll need to tell the user where to stand. or You need to have some indication of where the um, observer, where the, the person who's viewing your exhibition will stand. Um, and the image should be different in two ways from the original object. So if you are doing an image of, let's say, your phone, then the image of your phone should be larger or smaller. It should be in a different orientation, which means maybe inverted. Maybe it's reversed from left to right, like in a mirror image. You could change the color by using filters or by using a prism. Or you could change the position by having the image be, being in a different place from the original object. 
this will generally happen with um, any concave convex or even a plane mirror. So position is relatively easy to do. Once you've done that, you are ready. You have completed the basic parts of the STEM module project. And then the only thing left to do is to keep going through that process. So you're going to check again. You have a look against the criteria. I will share you out detailed rubric and to try and get to higher levels. I'll put out more videos to show you how to go from a lower level to a higher level. But I hope that's clear. If you have any questions, please reply directly to this video or send me a personal message. Enjoy.